Diva Trucker. Diva. Hey. What's going That's on? The Lockout Men Podcast. What's going on? Then, uh, in Dallas area trying to make a drop. And then I'm going to be doing a Hail Mary to try to get to San Diego. San Diego. Before, by Wednesday. Yeah, man. It's rough. You're in <laughs> Dallas? Trying yep, to get to San Diego, to California. Mm -hmm. California. By that's Wednesday. that by Wednesday. Right. I'm throwing up a Hail Mary. <laughs> by Wednesday. California is your home, right? No, 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 no. Texas. But yeah. so you got so you got family in California? No, I got another delivery to make out there. Um, the the load that I was on, yeah, the load that I'm on was a one, two, three stop drop. So I had a load to deliver in Paris, California, one in Ennis, and then a last one in San Diego, um, which would have been delivered like by Friday. However, on Wednesday, I got in that truck crash. And that delayed everything by three days, trying to allocate a rental trailer, get the free transfer from one trailer to another trailer, and then get from Atlanta over here to make these deliveries. And, of course, you know, you they're not open on the weekend, so you got to wait till Monday morning to start dropping. Right, right. All right, we're going to get into right. we're going to get into that that truck crash and and how you how you feel about that. But beforehand, oh. I said beforehand. You're not planning on being home for the holiday. Oh, I was planning on it, but um, my plan was to be in North Carolina for Thanksgiving, um, which when I picked this load up on Tuesday at the time, I had plenty of time to go do my drop and then make it back to, to North Carolina, um, you know, for Thanksgiving with the grandkids and the fam. However, like I said, um, Due to a flatbed truck crashing in the back of me, that didn't happen. Well, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. So, uh, w what's the story behind it? Let's uh, let's talk about it. What what happened that day? Jesus Christ, Mister, you okay in there? Oh, oh, oh. oh. you alright? You run oh. from me, you fucking cocksucker. Where's my fucking money? Coming out of Atlanta, you would, I got to right about mile marker. Uh, I don't know, maybe. 38, 37. Matter of fact, I was at Mount Market 37 because I parked at 37.4. Um, and so we were in heavy rush hour traffic and you know how the traffic is coming around Atlanta and stuff like that. And so when um, I was traveling in the center lane and there were some trucks parked on the shoulder, a flatbed and a Schneider truck. In the right lane was another flatbed and, you know, some other cars and stuff. Lo and behold, Schneider just decided to pull off the shoulder into the lane of traffic. Not gaining no speed, not making sure he had plenty of clearance. He was parked behind a flatbed that was already parked there. But he just pulled out. And so that forced everybody to slow down. However, the flatbed slowed down, looked like he started veering over towards our lane. To give the Schneider truck a little clearance, the two cars that was in, in the middle lane in front of me slammed on brakes right in front of me. Just I, I get the impression the first car wasn't paying attention, and they just slammed on brakes. That caused everybody else to slam on brakes. I'm trying to make sure I don't hit them, and I started trying to go towards the left lane to force whoever's in the left lane off the road. You know, I, I'd rather force somebody off the shoulder, onto the shoulder, versus me hit somebody. However, the flatbed truck behind me who was hauling, I think he said semen shingles, of course, he was heavier than what I was, needed a longer stopping distance, smashed into the back of me and uh, wrecked up my trailer. What was the overall damage to the trailer? My trailer crashed up, so luckily my freight wasn't um, damaged. It did shift a little bit. Um, the type of freight that I was hauling, one of them did come out of the metal cage. Oh, hold on a second. See, because here I am. I got my left turn signal on. I'm in the left lane, swinging wide to make a left turn 
over an overpass. You got some Yahoo trying to beat me around the corner. My folks just, you know, they're in such a rush, they can't pay no damn attention. Okay, now, so my my trailer's going to be, I don't even know if it's repairable because the whole back end of the trailer smashed in. Testament to how good and structurally strong Great Dane trailers are because it did maintain good structural integrity. But the cross members underneath the back, I think it was three cross members, um, they got bent up one snapped in half completely. The four was busted all the way through. And the doors managed to stay closed. And like I said, I had some of my cargo shift, but not damaged. So I, I was happy for that. So, you know, it, it, it's a process of they had to, in addition to the state police coming out doing a report, uh, Georgia State DOT comes out to the accident scene to do, you know, their their investigation as well on the structural integrity of all the vehicles involved. If it's a drivable vehicle, towable vehicle, so she, on the scene she did, did she do what she, what she called a level two or level three? Level two or level three um, inspection on the truck and trailer before it was towed away by the wreckers. So, um, so your so your tra- was your whole truck and trailer was towed or just the trailer? No, just the trailer. My my tractor was intact. He ran into the back of me, so only the trailer got damaged. His truck, you might as well say his truck was totaled out because um, his front end was busted up pretty good. Um, the radiator had busted. There was oil spilt all across the back of my trailer. So I really felt bad for the gentleman. He was an older gentleman that he had been trucking for 32 years. And most of those 32 years, he had been an owner operator. The truck he was driving was a kind of an older truck. And so he was like, that's it. I'm, I'm done. No more trucking for me. That's that. That's good. I, this is it. When they take that truck, that's it. <laughs> you know, I felt bad for him. And he was so sweet. That accident right there of him being an owner operator, that accident right there pretty much took him out. Just yeah, put him out of business. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And he he was really nice. He came up, you know, um, once they got his truck hooked. Because when the crash happened, so and I knew it was Schneider that initially called created the situation. You know, like they created the perfect storm and didn't wait around for the aftermath. The Schneider did not make, let me make that clear, they didn't make contact with anybody, but their actions created the chain reaction. Tina, let's talk about that because, see, when I was first trained, when I went to CDL school, shout out to Tri-C Trucking Academy in Cleveland. Our Mm -hmm. instructor kind of had us to pull over to the side of the shoulder so that we can get an understanding on what we need to do when, whenever we need to pull off to the side of the shoulder. We need to get out. We need to set our, our four ways. And if we're going to be there for more than 10 minutes, right? we need to put our, our triangles right. out at a uh, hundred. I think it was 50, a right. hundred. I, I know it's like a hundred feet intervals for the three triangles. Right. Right. I, I think, yeah, 100, I don't know, maybe the first one, 10, and then 100 and 200 or 50, then 150 and 300, something like that. We don't do that in reality. But anyway, but anyway, he, he told us, like, when it's time to pull off, he says, don't just pull into mm-hmm. the line of traffic. You You got to gain you, you you gotta get you gotta get right. some speed up at least well some he speed. told he told me about 35 miles an hour right I mean some some instances depending uh-huh. on where you pulled off at and how the shoulder is but at least try to gain 35 miles per hour and then mm-hmm. make sure you got the the clearance or hope the opening right. or hopefully the truck either sees you with your left blinker on getting back on the road, hopefully he'll be able to give you some room or slow down enough for you to get in. So that's what I was taught. But 
lately in my in my journey, I, I I've right. seen a lot of crazy things. I've seen I've seen drivers just pull into the lane. I've seen drivers not not giving not not giving the care. And and in your particular instance, it it, it caused the accident. So even though they didn't they wasn't they wasn't involved, but they caused yep. it. And in this case, being that he caused it, he didn't even stop to stick around to make sure everybody was all right. So let me ask you this. Right. Do you think that that he didn't have an idea? Maybe he just didn't pay attention or what what do you think the Snyder driver was thinking when when he was getting back on the road? Oh no, I, I, I I'm going to tell you in my opinion, I feel like 100% he knew he called it and he knows since he didn't make no contact with it, he's going to keep driving like he ain't seen nothing. There, there's no way you pulled into a lane of traffic and didn't look behind you. Make sure that your trailer was all the way in the lane. And, you know, it was so loud, it echoed. You know, there's no way that you was driving and didn't pay no attention. But on the other hand, we have so many drivers that are come from countries that are basically no driving rules and roads, i.e. the you know, Middle East, Eastern Europe, and some of them Ethiopian drivers. Their driving skills are really to be questioned. They they do some stuff that just don't make sense. You know, it's like my father's from a different country. I know how they drive down there in that country. They're, it's very different. My uncle is from Mexico. I know how they drive there. I, I've been down there with him plenty of times and he puts the fear of God in me the way he drives between down there, you know? So if they're driving in other countries, like I know they drive in the country that my father's from, then yeah, they, they I, I see how they drive these, these semi trucks, you know? And unfortunately it, it, it looks like they're becoming a very strong majority because every time you look up, these trucking companies, they're all something else. They're not, American born, you know, not to say that something racist is, is wrong or not, because for every, you know, five good people, you might have one bad apple, you know, so I'm not saying that's everyone, but I have seen quite a bit, you know, that from the left foot up on top of the dashboard today. Oh my God. Just literally 35 minutes ago, I seen a brother do it for the first time. And I was like, Hey man, I, I I tooted at him. He was waving high to me, but he had a foot up. I'm like, oh. Call nine one one. They're on their way. It's all right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they figured that they on a long drive. They 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 want to put their feet up, but they don't real they don't realize how much of reaction time that you need in case anything goes wrong and. You you get in that front end collision, man. I'm 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 just saying these trucks ain't ain't built for it tough. They 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 fiberglass. I, I, have you guys ever seen a burnt out truck before? Like if a truck catches fire, it's it's done. Yeah, I I I've I've seen that live and in action. I the I got it on TikTok. I did live TikTok. I was on the news. I caught an entire semi truck at a pilot gas station burning. A car crashed into it, and the whole truck went up like a ball of flame. I recorded the entire thing, right? And then they usually have to wait 24 hours or something for it to, you know, cool off. Which I'm glad you say that because that was the situation with, uh, like I said, there was the the Schneider truck and another flatbed on the shoulder. The flatbed they had been on the shoulder, which. I'm going to say is indicative of the poor company that he's working for as a company driver or at least on to because his brakes or he had a, a hub steel leak or something. He said his brakes caught on fire. The back tires his on his trailer burned it off. And he had been sitting on the shoulder for over 24 hours in his truck. And so what Schneider was doing, I don't know that, they pulled up so close. I don't know if they were back there sleeping behind them and decided to take off or they weren't paying attention and ran off the road and, into, you know, towards the back of him and then tried to swerve back into traffic. 
All I know is he pulled off that shoulder from a dead stop. And, you know, that, that one trailer had been sitting there, um, you know, for 24 hours because their tires had burned and their company left them out there, didn't send a record or nothing to, um, you know, remove him from the road for safety. In addition to that, you're somewhere you didn't have access to a restroom. So what does that say about that flatbedder's company? Could that have also created part of the accident, you know, that he was there as an obstruction? I'm going to say no, because I don't know what the hell Schneider was thinking that he even got that close to that flatbed. But when he pulled out, he pulled out between the truck that was on the shoulder and another truck that was approaching. And like in the video, oh, shit. In the video, um, you see the flatbed truck slow down. I myself kind of just, you know, took my foot off the gas. But then the reaction of the two cars in front of me, they hit the brakes so fast. You know, it was just like, you're looking, and I'm like, what the hell are you slowing down for? And then now I, I was forced to slam on brakes because they chose to just come to a complete stop. So, Diva, this unfortunate situation, this this wasn't your first time in a semi-truck accident or a semi-truck crash. Uh, we spoke about that accident that you was in years ago. It's been a minute since that that you ever been in a crash, and now you end up getting into another one. How does this make you feel overall now? I mean, are you still are you still strong enough to... To continue trucking? I mean, I know you are, but I just want to know where your headspace is at now. Like, I, I was in an accident before, and, and now I'm in a, another accident now. How, how does that make you feel? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say this is what I came thought about yesterday when I was sitting in the emergency room. God has a way of snatching you together. At, at, at a particular time in your life when you don't think you need action. I felt like with the first crash, I survived it because he had a reason. He had a purpose for me. It wasn't yet revealed to me what it was, but I knew I needed to get my life right and get together so that I could be a living testimony to, I feel like, to his grace and mercy. Maybe my job was to witness to other people that, you know, hey, I can survive something and continue and then not only continue, but drive and do well and move forward. You know, the next, you know, just that little bit of inspiration can help someone else. Now, in my personal life, in the last, since January 22, my world has been turned upside down. Multiple deaths, um, you know, and from family members, COVID, the war in Ukraine creating, you know, truck crashes and, I mean, not truck crashes, fuel prices going. And I'm, you know, in trucking 11 years, I've never been to the point where I was nearly, where I'm really pretty much bankrupt or destitute. And I'm just trying to hold on and drive to that next bread, piece of breadcrumb, don't know where your next meal coming from. It's gotten that bad out here for people who are owner operators. And I try to stay positive and just keep going. You know, I'm on the last four payments of my lease where the truck could be paid off in title and hand. And where everything was peachy keen, you know, of course, you know, now at the end, that's when the little BS come out. You know, they, the little hidden fees and things that there's little stunts they're trying to pull. And I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, I'm not being taken advantage of. I feel like, and I ain't done some right things myself, so I feel like, you know, God is snatching me by the neck. Hey, shaking me. I put you on the right path, and now you done veer from that path. So here's a little, uh, you know, knock upside the head. Get your shit together again, you know. Do it make me want to quit trucking? No. Do I feel like I need to break off the road? Yes. Cause I feel like now, you know what, let me, let me come off the road. Let me, uh, I don't know, run maybe regional or local for a little bit, get my health back together, get my home situation back together, get back right, period. 
so that I can continue to be, you know, a positive person and to thrive so that my business can continue to go forward and not fold up, you know. This I, I got to get right, you know. And I, I feel like this is just another wake-up call, at least for me, personally. You know, sometimes they, you know, you'll find yourself sit in situations that you shouldn't be in for, and I ain't going to say all fault of mine, but situations you shouldn't be in and you, you've been trying to figure out how to get out. Well, now this is going to set you back straight and get you out and get you back right. Am I so grateful that I didn't hit anybody? Oh, hell yeah, because, you know, then that lot of liability would be on me too. And, yeah, so I'm not going to quit. I My mentality when the first crash happened was I wasn't going to let a white man run me off the road. And my mentality is this. I ain't going to let nobody else run me off the road. I'm going to quit when I want to quit. I got some goals I'm trying to achieve. And I'm going to just keep going and, you know, try to do it the right way. Right, Tina, Diva Trucker. I, I I love that testament. I I love that testament. I love talking to you, man. We we had some great uh conversations and you and you had some awesome topics. And it's unfortunate and I I'm sorry that that incident happened to you, but it sounds as though it still makes you it, it makes you stronger. It, it makes you stronger. It makes you appreciate more things and as us truckers we 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 also understand as veteran truckers that things happen and as 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 much as we try to be cautious as much as we try to be safe there's also there's there's always that other driver that puts you in a situation that 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 messes that messes up the program so yeah, I, I'm definitely glad that you are right. I'm definitely glad that it was just the trailer and definitely not the the, the truck itself because it sounds as though you you only got four more payments to go. You have your title, and if something would have happened to that truck, that pretty much would have oh well four well four more months. No, well, not four, four more payments. payments four, four more months. More, oh, four four, more are months. they weekly payments? Yeah. Gotcha. Right. You gotcha. know, the weekly payments on, no, 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 no. Weekly payments on the lease payments. Yeah. Four more months. But let, me, let me say something, which which I think is important. Second time that I haven't been put into this situation. Um, the importance of having not just your affairs in order, but as truckers, insurance in order. And I ain't just talking about, you know, bipedal insurance, truck insurance, because that's mandatory to have in order to roll, period. But you must some kind of way have some type of life insurance policy and if you don't have that make sure you get some um, short-term disability or something like that because that can be the lifesaver to make or break you when you get down and you out of income you know if you get hurt your truck get totaled or whatever your truck break down and you you can't work because you got some type of physical ailment or something that happened to you and you got no income coming in. That short-term disability, whether it's through Aflac or Omaha Mutual, Liberty, you know, that is so, so important. When my first truck crash happened, I had health insurance and everything, but I never, I didn't sign up for the, you know, like the short-term disabilities and accidental coverages or whatever like that, because they, they offer like accidental coverage in the event that, you know, you're hurt as a result of the accident, that's like an extra insurance policy. And my employer at the time, which was FFE, didn't care to say, hey, when you're doing this, make sure you sign up for this too. They kept their mouth shut, you know. Um, and as a, after that, I learned, hey, you need insurance. I don't care what it costs. Pay the money. Pay for the, you know, I have always carried it. But up until when my truck went down and went in the shop for three months back here in January, and like I said, I have been to the point where I'm like, some weeks I'm going weeks without my paycheck, where I can just barely feed myself, you know. I, I've had to let all my insurance policies go, my health insurance, life insurance, the disability, all within the last eight months. I had to drop the coverage because I could not afford to carry it. Now, here go another crash, which required a trip to the ER, as well as pain medication. 
I don't have that coverage. You know, if I, if I had to miss some days off work or if I have to go to physical therapy, you know, act like I pay you for the time that you're missing off work. Give you that money to make sure your bills and stuff is paid. It's really important that drivers have it because you could be a driver. Somebody like me, I'm single, don't have nobody. My kids is grown and gone, but they got families of their own and they're not in the position to take care of mom. I don't have anybody in my corner to look out after me. So it's, it's, it behooves me and the next person as well to have that backup to protect themselves in the event that something happens. A lot of these truckers ain't got nobody to, in their corner to help them. They got their hands stuck out when it's paycheck time. But if they get down and they luck, they ain't got nobody that's there to help them out. Folks who know you need help, and then they'll turn their back on you, not answer your phone calls. Oh, man, she might be looking for some more. He, you know, he might be needing a place to stay. Uh, you know, folks won't even call you and invite you to Thanksgiving dinner or whatever like that. You have to, as a trucker, especially if you're owner-operator, take care of yourself. Because you ain't got nobody you can depend on when the chips is down. So, my advice to people, if you're an owner-operator, make sure you get that short-term disability. And I don't care how much it costs. Some life insurance, get something. Don't be caught without it. I can't accept that. Why not? Because it's not real money? Well, that's not a real breakfast. That's some good ass advice. And I, I, I took heed of that advice years ago when I when I got into trucking. I didn't have life insurance. And and I've been I've been trying to get that for years. It, I was I was married at one point and my wife's job offered life insurance, but after we got divorced and I had to get my own insurance. Yeah, I I realized how important, even as a company driver, I, I, I realized how important it is for life insurance. And I stress that to a lot of people out here because getting into trucking now is all about getting to the bag. It's, it's getting to the bag. It's getting to the bag, getting to the money. But, but... Getting to the money requires you to be in good health to drive, right? And if you're not in and if you're not in good health and for some odd reason if for some odd reason you come down in my in in my experience, you come down with COVID and you be out of you be out of commission for about three months. Luckily for me, I was with a with a company that that really cares about their drivers and I was able to uh, get FM FM LA through them to continue to get paid to get a paycheck to take care of my bills but you you're going to end up with some companies that's not even going to do that and you're going to end up over here talking about well yeah I'm an owner operator I'm a lease purchase and I don't have insurance through that company because they inspect you to get it and you're not and, and you didn't get it but now you're out of work you don't get no money and 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 the mounting hospital bills trust me they'll take care of you they'll get you back to good health but when it comes time to pay they'll definitely send their dolls after you yeah remember uh remember last year lockout you was hemmed up at the hospital for about three months and you watched our tv and you ate our food and 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 you you was in our bed and we had to right. we had to keep we had to we had to keep <laughs> the bed clean. Up. You messed up our sheets. Yeah, we we want all we 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 want you to pay for all of that. Yeah, but wait. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, don't don't worry. We know you back to right. good health now, so you should be back at work, right? Well, no, I'm at home recovering. Mm -hmm. I'm at home recovering. So yeah, right. yeah, definitely insurance <laughs> exactly. is is definitely in, in important. Insurance, health insurance, all kinds of insurance. And right. again, even on top of the insurance, I would like to add that I I know some of you guys, y'all out here solo, y'all might not have family or anything like that, but have somebody in my in my particular case, my son, have have somebody that in case of that situation they need to 
or they need to get you home after after a tragedy or after a tragedy. You got to make sure that they are able to get or get your body home so they can give you the a proper send off. Because some places they there's truckers all over the world that's sitting up in a in a morgue somewhere because somebody can't afford to yeah somebody can't afford to get you get you home and ain't no telling what happens after that and that that that's how i set up uh i've structured my insurance my life insurance policy to uh one when i set the limits on it i put it for four hundred and fifty thousand, and uh, i put both my 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 adult daughters and then I listed my grandchildren on there all as well as beneficiaries. So it gets split, a, you know, certain percentage to each one of them. But my, my youngest daughter was the one that I set up to be like the executor of the estate. She would, you know, make the ultimate decision. My oldest one, she'll see everything being moved around. Like when I called and said, hey, I've been hit. She was ready to hit the highway within 10 minutes to leave North Carolina, we on the way, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, don't come yet. <laughs> she going to come see about her mama. The youngest one, that's the brains of the operation, you know? So, you know, I, I have it set up so that, one, my my trucking business or whatever, that, that will have money to function. They will have money to, uh, you know, uh, resolve my final bills, you know, because usually when somebody dies, you, you don't always have some type of creditor still trying to come after the estate. To, to pay it, you know, um, make sure that my home is, my home is paid for already, but, you know, to make sure that the upkeep and welfare is, is a transfer over to them, but upkeep welfare is there. My grandchildren, because they are, because three of them, the grand, two grands and one great grand, they're, you know, under age 10 and all the way from 10 down to there's 10, two and one on the great. The oldest one is 19. I've got it so that money would be allocated to them but it won't they won't get it until they're of college age they have to go to college in order to get access to that money so it ain't like oh you die and then it's gonna be a check paid out like because they're minors that money ain't gonna go to my daughter you know and then she's got all of this this money access you know to, to blow through I, I, i've got to set up now you, you have to be in college in order to access that money She'll get her little portion, you know, and then the kids will get theirs when they become of age. So I, you know, you, you got it, it, it. Nobody never wants to think about if something happens to you, but it's like, okay, if if I pass, this is the funeral home. You know, I, I got a pre needs plan out there with a funeral company. This is where you need to take me to. They'll, you know, the funeral services and blah 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 cremation and all of this stuff. Those those things you have to be, you know, think about. No, nobody wants to think about that at this young of an age or whatever. I'm 53. But after that first crash, those are the things I thought about. I'm like, okay, well, something else happened. I need, you know, look for this. This is where things are at. You know, I got all my information on the tablet. I don't care what the hell happened. If somebody break in a steal or whatever, make sure you find this tablet. This tablet has the password, the count. Um, the will, the instructions, you know, the trust, all, all of that stuff like that, power of attorney, all all on a tablet. So, you know, it's good to leave those type of instructions on which your, whoever your family is or somebody that, you know, you can trust to see to it being executed the way you will want it in, in the event of your demise, untimely demise, I should say. I got, I got all of that. I, I got all of that paperwork at home in a folder before where my son can find it mm -hmm. and everything. So yeah, right. definitely the power of attorney uh, in case I, in case I'm in a hospital and I can't, I can't say for myself, my son is there. He can say for myself and all like that. The only thing that I, I have additional people on as beneficiaries because I know in the event of anything that happens to me, I know my son is not going to be in the in the headspace where he's supposed to be. He's going to need some help. So I and got 
I got additional people uh-huh. on on there as beneficiary to help him out so that he's able that he's able to do what he need to do with the help of somebody to get him through. So yes, most definitely. Man, Diva, always all always a great, great conversation. Thank you very much for sitting down with me and chopping it up with me once again. What's your thoughts about some of these drivers out here? The, especially new drivers that's coming out here. They say they just want to live out of the truck and they don't want they don't want to have no responsibilities. But how important it is to maybe get out of the truck every once in a while. How how important do you think it is to have somewhere other than a hotel to call a home to at least get home and and relax, put your feet up, break away. How, how important do you think it is to, to have that comfortability to come back to? Other than, I, now I, I understand if you're a young guy, maybe in your 20s, maybe 30s, but what about for the people that's like in our, our age range? 40s, 50s, what, what about what about us? Do you, do you think we, we need a, a home to come back to because I I do I I do I really want to when I get home on the weekend I'm I'm kicking up feet up watching some Law and Order I like that I'm in my house I'm in my bed I mean how how important is that to you? Can I help you? Maybe we can help you. We're here to offer you protection. Oh. Got all the protection we need. Oh. oh! Thanks, but no thanks, fellas. Oh! Miller Lite cans have a taste protector lid with a special barrier to block out that metal can taste and lock in that great Pilsner taste. Let's muff the flow with this guy. Oh, thanks. Oh! The taste protector lid from Miller Lite. That's a really a good topic. So let me just say this like two different kind of ways. When I first started trucking, I was on the heels of a divorce. And that's what, you know, helped me go get into trucking was that, you know what? My youngest kid, she was starting her senior year in high school. The oldest one was married and gone off. Her husband was military with her and the grandkids. And they were off uh, between Afghanistan and uh, Alaska. So I sold everything, sold my house. I put everything in storage. And I knew I only needed to come back home. Um, you know, to make sure I was there for her senior year, like uh, prom, graduation, homecoming, you know, stuff like that, um, and to see her off to college. So my first three years, I was pretty much living out of the truck. You know, I, I didn't need to go because I came from Vegas and started trucking, and um, I started with FFE, and, of course, they was like, no, nah, you got to get Texas driver's license. We got to show technically that you're, you're a Texas resident to hire you, so you got to change the driver's license to make it look like we hired you from Texas, and because Vegas wasn't one of their recruiting areas. So I was like, okay, I played along. You know, I put everything in storage, and then whenever I wanted to go back home to Vegas, I just went and got me a nice hotel room. And, like, if I was home in Vegas, I'd go get me a suite or something, you know, and just kick it up, or i go to my sister's house or, you know, whoever's house that i got family that's, that's going to take me in for a weekend or whatever. But um, when I was on the road and whether it was my 34-hour reset or I just wanted some downtime, I used to just go find me some dang hotel room that had truck parking somewhere and, and kick back. About five years in, I was like, huh, I kind of want my own place. But my thing was, man, if I stay, I like to stay running. I, I don't want to go on home. If I stay like when I gave up my place in Vegas in 2018 um, and I bought my house, for one whole year, I just stayed in the truck. You know, I got a hotel room because I added it up when I was getting ready to buy my house. The rent, the rent that I was paying was $7,000 for the whole year. And my utilities amounted to right at a 4000 for the whole year. I stayed in the truck for a whole year. And save that money, and then that was my down payment on my house. So I have a house. 
I can go to it whenever I want to. I don't have to um, come home. You know, like I said, I'm I'm, I'm single. And I love it. I, when I come home, I want to stay there for, you know, three, four, five, six days or whatever like that. And it's cool. But nowadays, I kind of have a adverse feeling to the house because, in, like I said, in January 22, I had some deaths in the family. One of those deaths occurred within my household uh, was an uncle that I was caring for. So it's like nowadays I feel like I don't even want to go to the house and look at his bedroom because it brings back too many memories. So I stay on the road. I only come off the road when I got to go put my truck in the shop, which is roughly about two, three times a year. Um, it, it depends. You know, for the young people, it's easier. Hold on one second. Hold on a second. All deliveries. Okay. It's, it's easy to, you know, if you got a goal you're trying to achieve, yeah, it's, it's easy to not go home or not get an apartment. And, you know, be pay, if you're a trucker, even if you're on the road three, four months at a time. To me, I just went, man, I can't see paying, you know, rent for a place that I'm at. Or, like, when, when I made my choice to give up my um, cable and internet. I was like, man, I'm paying all of this a hundred and something dollars for cable and internet, and I ain't even there to enjoy it. You know, I can't use it on my phone when I'm on the road, so I just let it go. My house is paid for. I don't owe no mortgage. So, but just think, if you're just paying rent and you're not going home often enough, that's that's a lot of money you you spend. It. Have you thought about renting? renting out your house have you thought about airbnb and airb airbnb in your house have you ever thought of that yeah i'm actually um in the process of rehabbing my house so that i can rent it out and i'm looking for um my retirement home now basically i'm looking for a country house out in the middle of the sticks out in the woods, somewhere behind the tree lines where you got to make a reservation to come find me. Um, and I want to kind of be, I ain't going to say like off the grid, but I don't want to be within city limits. I want to be somewhere out hidden in the country. So I have learned that as an owner operator, if I can get a truck and pay a truck $120 something thousand dollars in three years, when I go buy this next house, if I just work a little longer, you know, I can buy some land, have a house put out there or buy the house already on the land and pretty much pay cash or say pay within five years and have it paid off. Because I don't want to be, you know, 70, 30 years old, 80 years old with a 30 year mortgage, you know. So my house, I'm going to rent out and I'm going to continue to run out of my truck and drive for the next three years so that I can buy my land and have it paid off. That's a hell of a goal, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm in full support of that. Definitely in full support of that. Diva trucker, everybody. Beautiful conversation. <laughs> beautiful you. young lady, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm in awe of you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Very humbling. The run, the go, the back of tequila, I mix it all up and I swear that I hate none of them in my pocket if it ain't about the wallet, none of them in my mind if it ain't about the time, none of them in my wrist if it ain't about the time, no raise, none of them, nah, we gon' be fine. Hey, there's so many battles, on my left and my right, hey, take a shot for all of your problems, we ain't worried about them tonight, it's called shot by.